homology. There is the front flipper, a hand built on the same model as my own hand. Biologists define homology as similarity in structure between different organisms. Now this has the same design exactly as your arm. There's the upper My arm, textbook one bone. would show the forelimb, a hand, and it would show a bat's wing and a whale's flipper and say because they have similar structure, have similar bone pattern, that they must share a common ancestor. And then the five very long fingers, just like yours. The mere pattern of the bones doesn't tell you how it happened. You have to supply a mechanism to explain how it got that way. Well, Darwin's mechanism, as understood by modern Darwinists, was genetic. You inherited similar genes, and these genes made the bones grow the way they do. The problem is that the evidence doesn't fit that explanation. According to modern Darwinism, if two structures are similar because of common ancestry, each structure should be produced by similar genes and go through a similar pattern of development in the embryo. But contrary to these predictions, biologists are learning that homologous structures can be produced by different genes and follow different patterns of development. And you know, one of the things that uh, people are taught as evidence of evolution among living things, this hasn't got to do with changes in living things, but it's another evidence that's often used is the evidence from similarity, you know? The same sort of pattern is used in the forelimbs of these very, very different creatures. It's called the pentadactyl limb pattern. And, you know, if you look closely, you can see the incredible similarities. But it's also evidence for a common designer, the same designer using the same basic pattern. Well, why is that? People say, well, why would God make that same pattern? Well, maybe because it makes good engineering sense makes much more sense than evolution. In fact, there are evidences that show that it's pretty well impossible to explain by evolution. For example, the development of the human and the frog hand, and those of you who saw the debate I had recently would have seen this, um, the way in which the human hand develops, and of course, according to evolutionary thinking, the similarities between the human hand and the frog hand with their five digits is because we definitely came from the same ancestor that had that sort of digit pattern. But if we had the same ancestor, if that's the reason for the similarity, then you would have common ancestral genes and the same sort of development pathway. And that's just common sense. But the way they develop is radically different. And the frog hand, the material, sorry, the human hand, the material between the digits dissolve. In the frog hand, the digits grow from buds. It's almost as if God is saying, hey, most of the time you can you know, uh, it, it's a bit subtle and it's your choice whether you choose to reject my word and believe in a common ancestor. But here, when you really think about it, common sense tells you that the common ancestry, the evolutionary explanation, doesn't work. So attractive that Darwin said that it would uh, convince him that his theory was true even if all the other evidence were against him. Now there's a flaw in this whole system, at least uh, more than one flaw in fact. Uh, one is that uh, the hypothesis was taken to be true simply because of its logical and imaginative appeal without checking it out against the, the evidence, like the fossil evidence. It was a, a, uh, a hypothesis that was imposed upon the evidence rather than that was tested by the evidence. Now the other thing that's uh, very interesting about this uh, view of things is that the, the features that create the classification, such as hair or fur in mammals, are called homologies. They're supposed to be inherited from a common ancestor. But in fact, in a great many cases, the homologies are traceable to different parts in the embryo and to different genes. Uh, so in short, the um, animals get them by an entirely different route. And this is strongly inconsistent with the common ancestry hypothesis uh, to explain them. It's also a well-known fact among uh, embryologists, but it never comes out uh, to the general public because, well, it's so unpalatable a fact and so difficult to explain on Darwinian theory. There are also examples of other animals with similar structures that evolutionists would rather not discuss because they are clearly more consistent with a common creator. The eye of the octopus is very similar to the human eye and much different than fish eyes. 
pig heart is very similar to a human heart. The specific gravity of blood in the humans is more closely related to snakes than to apes. When you look at the big picture, you see a creator who with great precision and originality makes sometimes similar parts to create very different animals. Check out the platypus as one of the many examples that defy any evolutionary mechanism or any common ancestor relationship. You might be interested in the three DVD set, Incredible Creatures That Defy Evolution. Then even when the parts may look similar, God caused them to form in a different developmental pattern from a different gene to emphasize the uniqueness of each of his creations. Look at how similar pairing the animals are in the following video clip, yet they are completely different animal classes. So here you have creatures that as far as their appearance is concerned are incredibly similar, but the ichthyosaur, being a reptile, could not have had a common ancestor in evolutionary theory with the shark. Neither could the killer whale, which is a mammal. The argument of similarity in structure does make for nice pictures in evolutionary textbooks. But the pictures, like all scientific evidence, needs to be interpreted properly and they do not speak for themselves. When understood fully, homology really supports a common creator. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name, Genesis 2, 19.